Hey, good morning, everybody. It is Friday, uh, June 25. Uh, hope, hope you're doing well. The week is going along for you. Uh, busy week here at the church. We've had vacation Bible school uh, going on all the course of the week. And uh, today, uh, during the morning hours, um, <clears throat> our middle school youth group will be headed off to wildlife camp uh, down in Antelope, Oregon. Um, the, uh, the, what do they call it? Wild Horse Canyon uh, 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 Young Life Camp. So we're all excited for their trip and their, their time down there. Um, we're looking ahead here in Spokane to a lot of hot weather in the next week. Uh, the newspapers are talking about it. The It's on the radio. Everybody's talking about the heat that's to come. And we're going to want to be checking in with one another throughout the course of the week uh, as we can just to make sure everybody's staying staying cool. Uh, it's not supposed to cool off too much at the night and the longer the long stretch makes it uh, potentially pretty dangerous actually uh, for certain groups of people so uh, be checking in on those that you're that, that you might be concerned about um, as we move through that week I'll remind you of that uh, as we go through it. Uh, together. Today we're looking at Psalm 22, which is pretty famous because it's the psalm that Jesus uh, quotes from the cross. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? As we know it, it's a little different in the message translation. Um, it's a little bit more lengthy psalm than what we've been reading, so we'll, we'll go ahead and get to it. Let's take a moment to uh, quietly prepare our minds and our hearts as we listen to these words. Psalm 22, God, God, my God, why did you dump me miles from nowhere? Doubled up with pain, I call to God all the day long, no answer, nothing, I keep at it all night long, tossing and turning. And you, are you indifferent, above it all, leaning back on the cushions of Israel's praise? We know you were there for our parents. They cried for your help and you gave it. They trusted and you lived a good life. And here I am, a nothing, an earthworm, something to step on, to squash. Everyone pokes fun at me. They make faces at me. They shake their heads. They, let's see how God handles this one since God likes him so much. Let him help him. And to think you were midwife at my birth, setting me at my mother's breasts. When I left the womb, you cradled me. Since the moment of birth, you've been my God. Then you moved far away, and trouble moved in next door. I need a neighbor. Herds of bulls come at me. The raging bulls stampede, horns lowered, nostrils flaring, like a herd of buffalo on the move. I'm a bucket kicked over and spilled. Every joint in my body has been pulled apart. My heart is a blob of melted wax in my gut. I'm dry as a bone. My tongue black and swollen. They've laid me out for burial in the dirt. Now packs of wild dogs come at me. Thugs gang up on me. They pin me down, hand and foot, and lock me in a cage. A bag of bones in a cage stared at by every passerby. And take my wallet and the shirt off my back and then throw dice for my clothes. You, God, don't put off my rescue. Hurry and help me. Don't let them cut my throat. Don't let those mongrels devour me. If you don't show up soon, I'm done for. Gored by the bulls, meat for the lions. Here's the story I tell my friends when they come to worship and punctuate it with hallelujahs. Shout hallelujah, you God worshipers. Give glory, you sons of Jacob. Adore him, you daughters of Israel. He has never let you down, never looked the other way when you were being kicked around. He has never wandered off to do his own thing. He has been right there listening. Here in this great gathering for worship, I have discovered this praise life, and I'll do what I promised right here in front of the God worshipers, down and outer sit at God's table and eat their fill. Everyone on the hunt for God is here praising him. Live it up from head to toe. Don't ever quit. 
From the four corners of the earth, people are coming to their senses. They're running from, running back to God. Long-lost families are falling on their faces before him. God has taken charge. From now on, he has the last word. All the power mongers are before him, worshiping. All the poor and powerless, too, worshiping. Along with, along with those who never got it, worshiping. Our children and their children will get in on this. The word is passed along from parent to child. Babies not yet conceived will hear the good news that God does what he says. This is the note that uh, Eugene Peterson adds to the psalm. He says, from the experiences of the psalmists, we also learn how common it is to experience the absence of God. Belief in God doesn't exempt us from feeling abandoned. Praising God doesn't inoculate us from doubts about him. Meditating devoutly on God's word doesn't insulate us from the feelings of darkness and dryness, of desertion and desolation. In fact, Jesus hanging on the cross used the same prayer at the moment he was completing the work of salvation. And on his lips, this prayer validates the experience of the absence of God as integral to our own experience. Isn't that interesting? The absence, the experience of the absence, the seeming experience of the absence of God uh, is, is part and parcel to what it means to live a life of faith. I know that for many people that's um, discouraging, but I know for many it, it, it's comforting to know that the reality of their own situation is not unique, right? If you are a person who experiences doubts, it's good to know that others do as well, that you're, there's nothing inherently wrong with you in that way. Um, and I know at least for me, when I find myself in those moments of doubt, the company that I find in the midst of the, the, grand, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the grand company of doubters that is all of us uh, is good company to keep. Let's pray for the day ahead. Loving God, we, we give you thanks that you speak into our lives and that you are with us in the midst of all circumstances, whether for good or for challenge. We thank you that when we feel abandoned, that simply a feeling and the reality is that you're still with us though we may not know it though we may not sense it or feel it you are with us Lord as we look ahead to the, the weekend and the week ahead of us there is this uh, great heat wave on the way and we want to pray that you would shelter and protect uh, the most vulnerable among our lot that you would be with those who are without housing or in or or who experience inadequate housing we pray that you would be with those for whom health is a challenge or a significant issue uh, we pray for those uh, the the young who um, uh, who may not know how to deal with 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 the heat and Lord, we pray that you would um, guide us through that and help us to look out for one another. Lord, help us in, in our lives to be people who are constantly looking out for those who live at the margins, to live our lives in a way to intentionally uh, interact and reflect the, needs in the, uh, reflect the needs of those who are without means or reminded of their vulnerability in this particular situation. Lord, as we, um, as we think of the many blessings that you've given to us, help us to be thankful people. Help us to give you thanks for the, for the many good things that you've bestowed upon us in this life. And Lord, how good it is to be able to pray with this company of people uh, through, this, through this mode. And so, friends, I invite you to take a moment to lift up whatever prayers on your heart today. Lord, hear our prayers.
And so, God, we lift up all of this to you, trusting in the name of Jesus. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Amen. Hey, great to be with you, friends. Uh, Take care. Take care of one another. Look for God in the midst of it all. God bless you, and we will see you soon.